Are you feeling stuck in a low paying job? You want to transition into cybersecurity, but you think that you need a stack of certifications or a college degree. Well, in this video, I am going to disprove that myth. In fact, I'm going to reveal a strategy that will help you transition into cybersecurity without a bunch of certifications, none in fact, and without going back to school or starting from scratch. And if you stay with me to the end of this video, I'll actually tell you about a free masterclass that can show you exactly how to automatically attract high paying jobs right to your inbox. You ready for this cyber heroes? Let's grow. Before we talk about how to get a job without certifications, I think it's important first that we understand why you believe they are necessary in the first place. And this actually comes from industry trends and industry professionals that are giving you information based on their career path. If you talk to a bunch of technical IT professionals that have worked their ranks through to get to cybersecurity, many of them started on the help desk, they got system administration roles, and then they finally got into cybersecurity. Along the way, they grabbed many certifications. So they equate that to, if you get these certifications, then you can get to where I am. But that is not the case. And the challenge with that is, when you talk to many of these IT professionals, they give you a mountain of certifications to go get, but not how to apply, not how to communicate, or how to leverage them to get a job. And it often turns into discouragement, which has you on my channel right now, watching this video on one screen, studying or applying for a whole bunch of jobs on the other one. Not in agree, I understand. I've been doing this for a while. But here's some encouragement that I want you to understand why this certification requirement is not necessary because they are giving you general information that's not applied to your situation. So this is what I mean by this. Between the IT professionals in Hollywood, people are walking around here thinking that every single cybersecurity role involves hacking, coding, there's some random guy in a cafe with a hoodie on and he's hacking away. And guys, that is not based on reality. That is fairy tale, manufactured TV and industry stuff. It makes no sense. And what that does is it discourages people like you from even having the confidence that they have the ability to transition. So oftentimes when I'm talking to a potential client and they're talking about getting into cybersecurity, the first thing they throw up is their limitations. And they say, hey boy, I want to get into cybersecurity. I know it's a great field, but I'm not really techie or good at computers. And I look at them and say, okay, that's perfectly fine. We can figure out something that works for you. But this is not what the masses are saying. What they're telling you is, hey, go become very technical and then you can get into cybersecurity. So I have a question for you guys. I want you to think about this. Think about this. This is where it all comes together. If everybody that worked in cybersecurity was a technical person, who would manage the projects? Who would manage the people? Who would write the policies? Who would review the policies? Who would perform the data analysis on trends? Who would collect and review the evidence and prepare the company for the security assessment. Sure as heck not the tech guys, because those tech guys are glued to computers doing a whole bunch of technical things. And this is what I really want you to understand. Because people don't take the time to listen in with intent on what I'm saying when I tell you that you can get into cybersecurity without a certification, because let me ask you this, what does a CISSP certification have to do with a project manager? Absolutely nothing. But a project manager can go manage cybersecurity projects and make $150,000 a year, right? So the question is, why would the advice for that person go to be, go get a Security Plus certification, go get a CISSP? It's not relevant to their role or expertise. So why is the general information applied to everybody? For example, a technical writer, a technical writer that can write policies, procedures, instructions, even help with developing user instructions for training. Why would we encourage that person to go get a security plus certification or go get a CISSP certification? Because people have been told that they need these things. They don't get the courage to move forward. So what happens is it turns into a collection of certifications, but no action. 
And here's what I mean by that. I was talking to a client today. He had just got his security plus and he was like, all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is go get the Google thing. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, if I just spent my time, energy and effort to go get a certification that's supposed to help me get a job, why am I going to get another certification? Y'all let me know in the comments. Does that make sense to you? Are you out there right now on a cert collection trail? And if you are, it's chances, chances are you have not uncovered the true reason or should say the proper way to leverage the certification to get you a job. And I'm going to tell you that right now in this step, this step, it is very important when you get that certification, there's going to be some usually bullet points or a statement about what you should be able to do after you get that training. But the thing is people don't study to understand how to use the cert. They study test dumps, training materials, and remember things so they can pass the test. Now, passing the test is not going to help you pass the interview. The only thing it may do is maybe get a recruiter to call you about a, a potential opportunity. But if you are going to land the job, then you need to show up in the job interview as the right person for the job, which means you need to know how to communicate what you have learned through your training, not that you just completed it. Because companies are hiring you and putting you in position to add value. And if you cannot add value because you have nothing to give, then you're not going to be hired. So what's important to understand is number one, ask yourself this. If I'm going to transition into cybersecurity, because I talked about this in a previous video, it's easier to pivot than it is to start from scratch. Because if I'm starting from scratch, that means entry level pay. But you should be able to capitalize on your previous professional experience. If you worked as a project manager, if you've worked as a nurse or someone that has done some compliance re related things, if you worked in accounting, if you worked on the help desk, when you understand the true reason behind why you did those things, then it's going to give you greater insight on what transferable skills you have. Because the transferable skills is what's going to help you land the job. And the reason why you need to understand the why is because people that are actually paid a decent amount of money, I'm talking about the high paying positions, are not the ones that are actually doing the work. And I'm gonna prove it to you right now. Let's imagine that you went to the doctor because you had this worst pain in your side ever, right? Worst pain ever. So the doctor is gonna come in, he's gonna ask you a few questions, he's gonna touch it, because you know doctors do that, and ask you how long has it been hurting, et cetera, et cetera. Within a few minutes, they're going to come to a conclusion about what your problem is. That doctor is going to write something down on a piece of paper or update the computer system, and he's going to leave. Who's going to come in? A nurse. That nurse is going to come in and deliver the shot. So the question is, who makes the most money in this situation? And you already know it's the doctor, but who actually did the work? It's the nurse. This is the same principle and concept that happens in cybersecurity. Why do I advocate for people to work in GRC roles? It's because we are delivering the diagnosis, the structure, and then the tech guys are the ones that go do the work, right? It's a beautiful situation for how you can stack multiple jobs while still maintaining your lifestyle and producing value. But it's important to understand what skills you already have to transition into those spaces. Because once you understand the why, not just the task, the why behind that task, you can actually walk back through your previous experience and find that you have more GRC experience than you know. I have seen this from so many of my clients, so many of my clients, and that will set you up to make that transition. So project managers, instead of managing projects that are not related to IT or cybersecurity, you can take those same core skills and pivot and manage cybersecurity projects. And because you are in the cybersecurity domain, now you're going to be able to increase your income without going back to school, guys. I've told you all this before. What you do is not important. It's why and it's where. If I'm a project manager outside of cybersecurity, then I may not make as much, right? If I am a compliance analyst, Working outside of cybersecurity, I may not make as much. It's important to understand where your skills are most appreciated and valued so that you can take them there and be able to command 
a higher salary. So oftentimes, what people do is they say, hey, Boyd, you know, I was told if I go get this certification, then I'll get a job. And I usually ask, so how is that working out for you? And it's generally not. You have some people that are struggling with interviews and some people that are just completely lost and don't know why they are not able to make the transition. If that is you, I have something for you. In the comments, you will actually see a link to my free masterclass where I will teach you what I call the JAF. That is the job acquisition funnel. This funnel right here, this system will allow you to first diagnose why you are not landing a job. Like, so you will know exactly what's going on in your career and your skill set, et cetera. Then number two, it will show you exactly what you need to do to start attracting jobs on autopilot so that you do not have to submit job applications ever again, which is critical. Because the thing is, you want to be focused in using your time and energy and things that are going to build up your skill set and your income. And submitting job applications all day is not going to do that. So guys, click that link in the description if you want to learn how to transition into cybersecurity, find out what's holding you back, and then discover why companies are willing to pay you 100K plus completely free. Check it out. So my question for you is, did you know that there were non-technical roles in cybersecurity? Did you know that project managers, compliance analysts, managers, technical writers actually work in cybersecurity? Let me know in the comments. Like, I'm curious to know what you guys think. And let me know also if you would like me to create a video for the top three non-technical, non-coding, six-figure cybersecurity roles. Let me know. If I get enough people, then I'll drop that video next. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.